Hello and welcome to episode 36 of my Salem tutorial series. This episode is going to be on beekeeping. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to Old Book Heaven for sharing some wonderful information about Salem, especially the ability, the ability to right click on the icons in the minimap uh, to collect them and the further use of the control key to auto pick up things off the ground. So thank you for being such a nice person and sharing that information. Old Book Heaven, thank you very much. Okay, just to quickly show you the uh, cotton progress. So as you can see, I've been um, sowing a lot more fields with cotton. Because I tell you now, at the beginning of the game, yes, it's lovely wandering off into the wilderness, exploring, but have, doing that, you run great risk of keep getting knocked out and losing your valuable inspiration. As you can see now, mine's nearly at 600,000. So, you know, it's, it's always good to have that, especially for me recording this series, because it gives me the ability to unlock whatever new skill path we're choosing to take. In this case, it's beekeeping. But everything really in Salem for you for the first half of this game will revolve around your crops. Now, a couple of people have mentioned about how the game used to be a grind. Well, I can tell you now, if you follow my progression path that I'm showing you in this, in this, <laughs> in this Salem series, you will see that by us sowing and harvesting lots of cotton, we will then make lots of money. And by making lots of money, we can either buy the items we need or buy potions to allow us to learn the skills in order to make the potions that give us great amounts of inspiration. Because it all hinges on your inspiration. Depending on how much inspiration you have is how many skills you can learn. But I don't want us to rush through Salem because each one of them skills that we unlock unlocks a whole new area of fun. For example, I mean, when we got into coal, coaling, for example, and could make our coal clamps, that then gave us coal to use as fuel or coal to use for making bars of bubbly soap or coals for many other uses. Uh, when we started up uh, our fish shell trap, now normally I'd make about 10 of them minimum, but in this particular area I'm in, I've not really gone big on them. But you will see that everything in Salem revolves around each other. For example, the shellfish traps will give us food that we can use for when we um, sow our fields and use up our phlegm. The food we get from the shellfish traps will re help us regenerate our food. Plus, it will also feed, have other uses, like the fields themselves. Not only will we be getting cotton, but we'll be getting tartary of lamb, which is an item that we will be using in this episode. So everything feeds its, each other. Now, the reason we're doing beekeeping is so we can get onto something else. But anyway, I'm drifting. Let's get back to my notes. Now, I was going to show you just quickly the progress on my cotton fields. So, the first golden rule to your cotton fields is, okay, you obviously, for the first time that you uh, sow your fields, you'll have to use five compost. Once you've initially sown your first crop, okay, you can then use wood, let's bring it up, you can then use, <clears throat> excuse me, wood choppings to get the upkeep down to 50%. When you then harvest that field, so this field here I've got for example, when you harvest it, it will gain back 5% of the upkeep. So remember, when you replant that field, remember to then use some more wood choppings on it. And if it's the only fertilizer you use, you'll bring it straight back down to 50%. That way, when I re-harvest this field, I won't need five compost, I will only need two. I won't need 50 cotton seeds, I will only need 25. 
What that means is after I harvest this field, I will have lots more cotton that I can then re-sow this field, but then start sowing additional fields. We will keep expanding the amount of fields we are sowing and harvesting. And then in the same note, we will keep expanding our deed to an ever increasing size. Now how big you make your, your claim is up to you really. The bottom line is how much work do you want? So maybe getting a balance of say, I don't know, how many fields have I got here? I've got five, 10, 15, 22 at the moment. So maybe 25 fields or 50 fields, as long as it's enough to cover your claim costs and also give you additional silver, which you can then use for buying other items like nails and stuff, then it's all good, my dear pilgrims. Anyway, so that's the fields and that's keep ever expanding. So you may be asking, why are we now learning beekeeping and not heading for mining and metalworking? when we need it so much? The answer is simple, pilgrims. If you have money, you can simply buy whatever you need to progress, thereby removing the grind from the game to a certain extent. By learning beekeeping, we are also stepping closer to turkey farming, and turkey farming will help us with our crop farming. It will give us a good fertilizer to use, plus it will give us lots of food, as in meat. But beekeeping also has its benefits. Although we are not growing fruit trees at the moment, in the future we will. At the moment... <coughs> So that's their main use, okay, for the bee skeps is to, um, and learning beekeeping is so that you can make bee skeps and pollinate your fruit trees. We aren't exactly using them for that at the moment because we want them for other uses. For now they are a necessary stepping stone to our turkey farming. Um, but we will look at some of the items that they give us after we've uh, learnt beekeeping and made a bee skep. So let's take a look at what we need to learn beekeeping. Okay, so if I bring up the um, skills window and if we look, for, look at beekeeping, we will see that we need 3,050 flora and fauna, 2,200 herbs and sprouts, and 1300 sugar and spice. Right, okay, you will notice that we have enough sugar and spice, so we have 1800 of that. We have enough herbs and sprouts, we have 2300, so we've only just cleared that. But what we don't have enough of is flora and fauna, we're only at 2000, so we're going to need to raise that first of all. Okay, notice that um, I've got lots of pine cones in my pocket. The reason for this is we are going to be using uh, to get the necessary uh, proficiency points, we're going to use a couple of tar lamb of tartary. Now remember you get these by harvesting cotton. At the moment I've only got two but I can tell you when I get to a hundred fields I'm going to have urns full, loads of them. So and they give really good stats, especially uh, proficiency points, especially to stocks and cultivars, which is something we'll have to raise up later on in the episodes. But for now, I'll use just a couple to get the flora and fauna up. And also, if you have any tumbleweeds, they're also good. But in this early stage, no doubt you're like me and short of both of these. So pine cones, flaming pine cones, we will also be using. Hence why I've got loads. Hopefully it's enough. If not, I'll just have to grab some more out of one of my urns so we can learn this beekeeping skill. Okay, let's raise our flora and fauna and start the ball rolling because we want beekeeping. Okay, so first of all, I will learn one lamb of tartary. Study it. Hmm. Okay, then I will need to, now I, as you will see up here, I only need 100, so I won't waste another lamb of tartary. What I will do, let's come in a bit closer so you can see, let's go over to my fire, 
that I've got burning down here. If I never get past my wall of containers. And yeah, there's enough fuel left in it. We will make some flaming pine cones. So let's first just make one. Remember, we have to use them quickly. So I'll study that. Mm. Now we raise flora and fauna. Okay, we will now study another lamb of tartary. Oops, we have to eat first of all. Let's study actually some pine cones before they go. Hmm. 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 Eat some more food. Let's see, what's our flora and fauna on 1900? So let's do another flaming pine cone. I want to use them first, if I can. Let's study that. Hmm. Let's raise again. Okay, let's study this other lamb of tartary. Hmm. Now let's study some pine cones. Hmm. Let's raise again. Let's now use our tumbleweed. Oh, we need to eat. Wait for that to raise up a bit. Back, let's use these flaming pine cones. Mm. You're always on a time limit with them. Mm. So always use them quickly. Okay, let's make another one. And study them. Mm. I know you don't get a great deal from the flaming mm. pine cones. But hopefully you'll be in the same situation as me with them in an abundant supply nearby. So I always prefer to use what's easiest. Obviously, whatever you've got an abundance of, use that. It makes sense. Mm. Okay, let's raise again. Well, we're very nearly there. We need to raise it twice more. So this time let's study a tumbleweed. Mm. Another plant pine cone. Hmm. Let's make another pine cone. Let's eat. Let's start studying. Hmm. Let's raise again. Right, we need to do it, raise it once more. So let's keep studying. Hmm. And eating. And studying. Hmm. hmm. Make another pine cone. So useful, the pine cones. I do love them. Hmm. Okay, we're nearly there. Hmm. And raise again. Right, okay, now you can see beekeeping's turned white, so we can now learn it. Right, let's study these pine cones. Hmm. Hmm. Let's eat. Let's study a beetle, because that will give us our sh nearly all of our sugar and spice, and it will give us some herbs and sprouts as well, which we need. Also, by studying a stray chestnut, that will finish off the sugar and spice that we need, because we're just slightly short, so let's study that. Hmm. Okay, we now have the sugar and spice we need. Herbs and sprouts, we still need... Where is herbs and sprouts? There it is. Herbs and sprouts, 2,200. We have that done as well. Now we only need flora and fauna. So, you've guessed it, another pine cone. Okay, let's study that. Hmm. And again. Hmm. And again. Hmm. Now we have enough. Let's buy beekeeping. Right, okay. So we now have the skill beekeeping. That has unlocked the bee skep for us. To build a bee skep, we will need 20 clay and 8 hay, which we will get from the haystack we built previously. Okay, so you can see that I've got the clay. Let's go grab eight hay. 
So if we come up here, oh, there's the haystack, went on the wrong side, but never mind. Okay, now to harvest the hay from your haystack, right click on the haystack, collect hay. We want eight. So one, two, three, four. Let's study that actually, don't want to waste it. So we need to eat. That's enough, I think, that. Let's study. Hmm. Didn't want to waste that last one. So let's have a look. We've got two, four, six, eight. So right, we've got enough hay, we've got enough clay. Where do we put our bee skip? Well, bear in mind, once it's made, we can pick it up and drop it, replace it somewhere else. Um, it may be we have to empty it um, once it starts a colony inside. But for now, I'm not too concerned about because I don't have any fruit trees. As long as it's on my claim, so it's protected, then it's all good. And I'll pull it just over here, um, just because it's out going to be out the way. I'm in no immediate need for it. So to build the uh, B skip, we will go to build, and we will go to tools and utilities. And there you are. There's the skip. So we left click that. Notice it shows the radius of the trees, the fruit trees it will pollinate. Now the Bee skep is the best for pollination, but you can also use the butterfly um, container that we made previously because that, that has a bigger range, but it is not as effective as the bee skep for pollination. Anyway, for now we're not we're just doing the bee skep, learnt beekeeping, so we could get onto turkey farming. But let's pull it just there. Okay, so let's add the components. Remember, sh left shift key, left click, then just scroll your mouse wheel. Same with the clay. And let's click build. Okay, so let's step away. There is our bee skep for you to see in all its glory. Once you have a bee skep with one, with just one queen bee in it and five drones, you are good to go. You must not open and check your bee skeps more than once every 24 hours, or you risk collapsing the colony, and you will then have to start over if you do that because the bees do not like you checking on them more than once a day so remember that and if there is more than one queen bee in the skep the colony will collapse so always take out additional queen bees and make additional skeps ever growing and ever expanding when you have a market stall you can sell the extra queen bees that you have now, once you have the skep, you either need to pick flowers to get your queen bee and five drones, or because you now have money, simply buy your first lot from the town player stalls. Now, as you can see down here, I've purchased, well, I did purchase five drones, but one has died. So what I will need to do is go back to town and purchase another drone bee. The the Salem Wiki does say that you can start with between two to five drones, but I'll tell you now, with my experience with beekeeping, if you start with five drones in your skep along with one queen bee, then it, they will start to replicate uh, more drones. And you will also get items like the Delphic Bees and Royal Jelly. Now. The main use of the bee skep, like I say, is to pollinate nearby fruit trees, but there are other useful items it will give us, namely honey, royal jelly, delphic bees and beeswax, all good items. For example, you can use one royal jelly to turn one thing into another. Well, with some items it will only cost one royal jelly, so let's give you some examples. With one royal jelly you can turn a common earthworm into an earthworm worm python. 
and an earthworm python, python has multiple uses one being to get proficiency points but also you can put them in your compost heaps to get your um, to get the purity up um, you can also use free royal jellies to turn a dead warbite war cricket into a giant cricket which can then be used as a mount. You may have seen people riding these giant um, crickets. Well, that's how they get them, through using a royal jelly. And what they do is they get a dead war bite cricket and right-click it onto the royal jelly, three of them, remember, and then it turns it into a mount for you. So there we go, there's the uses. Now, to put the bees in the skep, right-click the skep, Drop, I normally drop the queen bee at the bottom and then just shift click the drones in. Like I say, I'm going to go and I will purchase another drone because I've been uh, preparing other episodes for so long I lost one of my drones. But such is life. I will just go pick some more flowers straight from the Johnny Cash song or I will simply go and buy another drown, a drone from the market. Now, as my um, colony builds up, it will randomly spawn more queen bees, although they are a rare occurrence. When a queen bee spawns, you will also get a royal jelly, royal jelly in their spawn as well. So remember, take any additional queen bees out. If you have more than one, it will collapse the colony. Remember, do not ch check your skep more than once a day or you risk collapsing your colony. And remember, as the days go by, this bar over here will fill up with honey. Remember as well, that's a good resource, which we will get to at a later stage. For now, I wanted to introduce you to beekeeping and the use, the many uses of it. But of course, we're heading for turkey farming. So um, there we have it. I will say with that, fun have fun beekeeping and wherever you are in the world god bless you and keep every last one of you safe thank you for watching and have a fantastic day i hope you enjoyed this episode on beekeeping goodbye